Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Aho here with KissAnalog.com and we're gonna do a real quick video. I'm just gonna show you why 12 bits is so much better than just eight bits. Vertical resolution. So we've got the RIGO DHO814, okay? And then we've got the NT 100 meg and a GWN stick 200 meg. Those are eight bit scopes, very nice scopes, but this is about why 12 bits is better than eight bits. When you have a waveform and you're looking at things, you're gonna slice this waveform up in a whole lot more slices uh, with 12 bits versus eight bits. So with eight bits, the screen is divided into 256 sections, basically, you know, steps where you can digitize the vertical length of your signal. With 12 bits, you get 4,000, so lots more. So we're gonna show you the little steps. You get an eight bit versus the 12 bit. So if you're looking at a waveform and you're trying to bring it into your screen and then something small happens, can you zoom in and look at that? So let's jump over here and I'll show you what it looks like, okay? All right, guys, this is a Rigel. All right, guys, so I'm taking a measurement. It says 1.02 volts and 10K. And then I've got the counter up, and it's just around 10 K is pretty locked on. And the DVM's up too, just so you can see a bunch of different readings. Sorry about the glare. This is a really shiny screen. Okay, guys, here at the Unity, same thing. We got the frequency counter up here. We're also seeing down here our measuring frequency, 1.01 volt. 1.01 volt. That's the uh, multimeter reading. Okay, just want to show you all that. So we're trying to use the full screen on both scopes, okay? We got more waveforms because this is seven grids instead of the five on the RIGO, okay? So but it's the same settings, 50 microseconds per division and 500 volts and 500 millivolts per division, okay? Same as the RIGO. All right, guys, and the GWN stack, same thing, 1.01 volts. And it's... Uh, Got the max and min on, but the frequency is 10k and the counter is showing 9.9997 or something like that. Okay, so it's uh, very close to the other ones, and again, um, 50 microseconds per division. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to lock all the scopes. Okay, we're going to stop them, freeze them. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I am going to blow it up to uh, let's see, I think it's 50 millivolts is what I want to go to. 50 millivolts, then I'll spread it out. And we're going to say we want to see the crossover. So look at that. Look at all those, what looks like stair steps, right? I mean, yeah, so that's what it looks like, okay? And what we have is 50 millivolts and 500 milliseconds. So let's do that on the other scopes. All right, guys, I got it frozen. And what we're gonna do is change this to 50 millivolts. All right, it's 50 millivolts down here. And then we'll spread it out and wow. Okay, okay, and then 500 microseconds per division. And look, there we go, there's that. Stair steppy looking thing, you know, it's pretty thick, it's filling up a grid almost, right? So, same thing as the 200 meg GWN stack above. Okay, now we're here at Rigo. Let's freeze that one. We'll come in and whoops, here, let's just take it out to 50 mil volts. Then, let's see what we change 500 nanoseconds. Whoops, got to move it over so I don't lose my screen there there it goes 500 nanoseconds look how straight that line is whoops touch screen um but yeah look how sorry about the reflection but uh yeah you can see the line look how straight it is versus that one so the screen set up the same on all of them and there's that one the GWN6. This is the MDO2204EG.
So 200 meg scope. And by the way, I've got all the memories maxed out, 10 mega points on this one. That doesn't really matter. That memory doesn't really matter because it's the, uh, that has to do with the deep memory. But just to let you know, I kind of maxed them out on, uh, on all of them. So yeah, there you go. That's why we want to see if, if there was something happening, we would see it on this line where over here it'd be lost. Now, if we were done with an 8-bit scope and we wanted to see that, all we'd have to do is turn it back on so it could continuously capture and then see how that little noise thing happens. Let me see if I freeze it. So now see we're capturing this little stuff, we're capturing this, because now this line right here is being divided into 256 pieces. So now we can get the resolution. But it's just if you capture a waveform, you're zooming in, looking around, that's where the 12-bit really helps. See, over here, if we let it run, freeze it, we get even more resolution. So look how, look how defined that signal is. Over here, it's kind of muddled a little bit, right? Over there, it's very clear. Okay, let's come up, just check the GW in a sec. Okay, let's just run it. Trying to capture, oh, there's one right there. And so, yeah, a little definition in there, but you can see it's, you know, it's different, right? So, I mean, it looks pretty good though. All right, guys, that was just a quick video on the Rigol, the 12-bit scope, just to show you what a 12-bit, the value of a 12-bit. Um, with an 8-bit, you can get around that. Uh, Maybe it's a little harder to capture the signal. 12-bit, you get the full screen, captured easier, zoom in. So that's the beauty of that. Quick video. Hope you liked it. Give it a thumbs up if you found it useful. I appreciate that. Subscribe if you haven't done so. And we'll see you next time.